What's up YouTube? Today we're going to take a look at lead code problem number 1777 products price for each store. Mark this easy, let's get into it. So we have a table called products containing a product ID, store and price. Store is an enum that can either be store 1, store 2 or store 3, only one of these values and each represents the store this product is available at. Price is the price of the product at this store and our task is to write an SQL query to find the price of each product in each store. We can return the result in any order and it should look something like this. Product ID, a column for store one, a column for store two, and another column for store three. Let's get into coding that up. So we're gonna start off selecting product ID since that is in the result table and that's what we should base our sales on. So we want to find sales for each product ID in each store, but not as a group by and having store as a column as it already is in the products table but we should have separate columns for each store and that is where it becomes tricky but there are similar problems to this on lead code and what you would usually do is you would go through the column in the input in this case store and check each value and if that value fits with what you want to have in that column output it. Otherwise you assign null and get rid of it or just don't show it. And in this case we're going to do this example for store one. So let's just see how that works out. So we're going to call this column store one and say if our store column has store one as value then we want to output that value, then we want to work with it. So that's output price since that's what's going to be in that column. And if that's not the case, null, missing value. So not, zero would be wrong because that would mean we sold it for zero dollars or something. But it should actually be null as a missing value. So let's just see what that gives us if we do that for all stores. So let's do another column for store two and store three. And we select that all from products. Let's run that and see what it gives us. So we actually go through this entire table products. Each row, we have five rows. So we have five output rows here as well. And for the first one, we have product ID 0, price 95 in store 1, because the store column is actually store 1 in the input. And then we have null for the other values. If we compare that to the expected output, we should have 95 in here, but then also have the values for store 2 and store 3 instead of having null. So we somehow need to combine this information. We have several columns for 0 and for one, but we should only have one. So how we do that is by grouping by this. So whenever we want to reduce it to just one column, it's always a good idea to use group by, and that's what we're gonna do here. And now we, we somehow need to get a single value for each of these. If we take a look at the output we have for store one, which is the second column, in my output, we have 95, we have null and null for zero. So we're only gonna get, we're only gonna have one value in here always. It can only one can be different from null, since we only have sales prices. We only have one sales price per store. So it can only be sold at this price. There can't be two prices at once. Um, I assume this is at one point in time, so we don't have a reduction in price in here or anything. So we just need to extract one single value from this product ID always. So we could either use the sum of that. It would just sum up values and ignore the null values or take zero for them. And that way we would have 95, 95 plus 0 plus 0 would be 95. 
could also use max in here to just get the maximum value. And we could also use minimum. It, it, it just needs to be any aggregate function, could even be average, that allows us to extract a single value from these. So let's run that and it's an accepted output. Let's submit that as well because it's already the correct solution. But let's spend a little bit more time talking about this. So let's see what happens if I change that to minimum. Basically our goal is just to get a single value for this group. It's a bit complicated to have that column structure. I would say not always the case, but that's how it works. Let's see if average works as well. All depends on how they handle null. And it does work. It just gives you these double values with decimals, which can be annoying. So yes, a bit of a weird problem, I would say. There's another problem in lead code which tells you to sum up sales by a given month. And that would work well here because you would use sum to get every sale in that month. And similarly, if we had another input table here, which would tell us sales of products in each store, we could use sum here to sum up all values that are in this store. And that would make a bit more sense. We would have more than one value we want to aggregate. And this way we're just using a dummy aggregate function to get it down to a single value. So that's pretty much it for that problem. Might not be something that comes up in interviews since it's a bit of a data transformation thing pivoting or transposing these rows into columns. But this kind of approach where you need to scan a certain row, a certain column, check the value and then use that in another column if that is the correct value, that is quite common. So it's still a good problem to take a look at and try to understand. So check it out. Anyways, that's been it for me today. If you want to do more easy lead code SQL problems, I have an entire playlist dedicated to that as well as medium and hard problems. So it makes it very easy for you to go through certain problems and study with me. And if you just want to stick around in general, it's always good to subscribe and to get the reminders to keep studying lead code questions in your sub feed. See you all next time.